Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Adam Weeks. I'm the youth pastor here at the Auburn Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it's true, the fruit of the Spirit is, is not a coconut. Ah, oh, the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, it's so nice to see so many of your bright, shining, smiling faces today. I am truly blessed to be here to talk with you about the fruit of the Spirit. Last night I was very much blessed. We had about 45, 50 people um, for our Vespers and at the Heidi Majorian's house and the Allington family hosted it. This is an excellent summer. Lots and lots of good stuff are happening here at your church. Let's see what the Bible says. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the Spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law that says these things are wrong. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. <laughs> Let's uh, explore why it may not be a coconut in this quick little video. Here we go. Ugh. How do I look? Is this good? I feel like you have to like puncture it first. It's got to have a weak spot. Maybe this. Um, can I just throw it or something? What if I just went? Maybe you use this with the hammer. But I feel like I'm gonna hurt myself if I try. I didn't need that thumb anyway. All right, let's go. That's stupid. I'm actually gonna whack it with a cleaver. I feel like that's something I've seen before. Oh. Ha! Oh boy, that is not making nearly as much headway as I thought it would. Is it just brute force? Is that, is that all it is? <laughs> How many of you have tried to open a, a coconut and maybe struggled a little bit? I would have loved to have shown that video to this lady here. Her name is Maud. Maud is the person I think of when I think of coconuts. Maud lives or lived in Roatan, Honduras, and I used to go to Roatan as a child. Roatan is a really neat place. Very near and dear to my heart, and Maud was our cook for many of these mission trips. In fact, I remember my, I was talking to my father and he uh, got to know Maud very well. My grandfather got to know Maud, just an incredible lady who was always smiling. And she not only would stay in Roatan with us, but she would go to other parts of Honduras to be our cook. She was just an incredibly wonderful, giving woman, very generous, always showing the fruits of the Spirit herself. I love Maud. This is a, a picture of her shared uh, by her granddaughter. And Maud is the kind of person that ah, everyone should know Maud. But I think when she saw that, that quick video clip, she would have laughed. Um, I don't have a picture of a lady named Ophelia, but this is what uh, ChatGPT came up with. I have an image in my mind. It's a short video clip. Do you have short video clips of when you're a childhood in that play in your mind? And this is mine. I'm uh, yay tall, and we pull up in a truck. And there are the dense forests all around us. If you know Roatan, you know that it is a tropical climate. Lots of coconut trees. And Ophelia is, has a small house in the middle of these coconut trees. And she was incredibly fast at opening up a coconut. That's what she did. She had a coconut grove and she sold coconuts. And she, I don't know if you have seen this before, 
but she would have a, a stick there on the ground. It was a, 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 a sharpened stick, and she would get the husk of a, of a coconut. And uh, if you, let's see if I can see this little picture. Yeah. If you start with a, a green coconut, it's got this big husk around it. And she would take that, and she would just shove it on this spike, and then she would just peel off these, the husk of that coconut, and then she'd finally get to the actual nut the coconut. And if you were there and she wanted to share with you what she had, she would very quickly, she would take that coconut and she would have a hatchet of some kind. And in three quick hits, she would open it up and this beautiful coconut with this wonderful coconut water and the juice, and she would share this with you. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut, but Maud and Ophelia, they exemplified to me as a young child on a regular basis the fruit of the Spirit. These women did not have an easy life. This was a struggle of life. They did not have the modern conveniences that we have and the history that they have of how they got to Roatan. It's pretty sad. These people that came to British Roatan and the history that got them there is pretty difficult. And you can imagine that sharing the fruits of the Spirit with someone who may not be just like them, could have been difficult, but they never showed it, always with a smile, no matter what. The fruits of the Spirit, it's not a coconut. Well, what is it? Well, we know that it starts with love, right? Love is that, that easy one. I wanted a way to visually share with you the fruits of the Spirit. So I asked, dear ChatGPT, Show me an emoji of the fruits of the Spirit. Let's go one by one. So we have love. That's pretty easy. We've got joy. That's not bad. Of course, we have peace. What's next? Patience. Kindness. That's a good one. Goodness. Faithfulness. Kind of similar, maybe. Apparently, that's self-control. Do the fruits of the Spirit come easy to you? Let's briefly go back. We're going to go back through these, and I want you, as we go back through these, to pause on each one. And here is my request of you as you see these images. Which of these are the easiest for you? Which of these are difficult for you? And then my last request, as you look at these, my last request, as you look at these, do any of these have anything in common? Do you notice anything about the fruits of the Spirit? All right. All right, here we go. So, love, is this one easy for you? Is it hard for you? Joy, peace. Patience, kindness, that was kind of fun, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and last but not least, self-control. Anything stand out to you? One thing I I observed as in uh, all of uh, AI's wisdom, whatever that means, they have their eyes closed <laughs> on a lot of them. Why do they have their eyes closed? Well, apparently that's how you show the emotion in a visual sense of these things in a simplified happy face. Prayer? What happens when the person you are supposed to share your fruit of the Spirit with, fruit of the Spirit, makes it difficult. 
We think of love, joy, peace. When these kids came up and saying, oh, this is so great, it's wonderful. Yep, these are the fruits of the Spirit. Yep, these are great. But what happens when a person that you're supposed to love breaks your heart? What happens when we don't feel love? How do we love when our love is broken? Our joy is taken. Peace is shattered. Patience has run out. Kindness is met with hate. Goodness is gone. Faithfulness has failed us. Gentleness has worn away and all we feel is harsh. Or our self-controls, our self-control runs out of well, it runs out of control. Dear Jesus, I need you now. Dear Jesus, I need you now. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. What's interesting to me about that image of a coconut is that you have the different forms that I showed you, the green husk, the smaller nut inside, and then finally, the goodness inside. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. These things are not what we would call salvation types of a list. This is not a list of things that we need to do to be saved. Correct? I really appreciate the story of the thief, the thief on the cross. I'm so glad that that story is in the Bible for us because it puts that to rest. At least it does for me. I don't think that the thief on the cross may have had an easy life. He was on the cross and events in his life led to that. But it wasn't a salvation issue, was it? Jesus very clearly said, yep, You got to accept it. We're good. See you soon. But it wasn't easy. What happens when love doesn't come easy? Luke 6, 27 and 28 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Luke 6 is an interesting chapter, and we won't go through it all now. The beginning of Luke Luke 6 starts with Jesus walking with his disciples. And maybe you remember this story. And they start to pick what in the fields? What are they picking in the fields? They pick the grain. And what do the Pharisees say to Jesus? Is the Sabbath, are you serious right now? We're just, we're here and we're just picking. Why are you like this? Why are you the way you are? Is how I would imagine how I would want to respond to the Pharisees questioning me as I just simply grab some grain as we walk through the field. Later in Luke 6, there is a man who is asking to be healed on the Sabbath day. And again, the Pharisees, what are you doing? Are you supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath day? Yes, yes I am. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. You sure can make it difficult to rip through that outer husk. You can make it, it can be very difficult to love others who hate you. I love the visualization of a tree. And how nice, wouldn't it be perfect if fruit trees came already pre-cut with their fruit, just ready for us all to easily pick This analogy, as Mrs. Taff was sharing, how great this picture is of the fruit of the Spirit. You see, the fruit on a tree is a a seed disbursement element. 
as you take a tree, what do you need? What does a tree need? It needs a few different elements, right? What are those elements? It needs maybe water. What else does a tree need? It needs sunlight. We need that sun to come down. It needs, I heard, soil, the nutrients in the soil. And the tree puts its roots down in there, and it starts to pick up these different elements from the sun, from the water, the carbon in the air, and it turns those things into a seed disbursement system. Fruit, right? The seeds and the fruit and the fruit. Now, I would imagine that a, a tree probably doesn't do a lot of thinking about this, right? A tree just kind of does that. A tree that is good bears good fruit. But there can be problems with trees. Have you seen a tree that didn't get as much water as it should? Have you seen a tree that maybe was shaded by another and wasn't getting enough sunlight? The nutrients weren't correct. That tree can struggle. Even when those roots go down deep, that tree can struggle. We used to live in Idaho before coming to Auburn. And we have great big tall trees here as well. I love this part of Auburn where we kind of go from the oak trees and we transition up to the big tall pine trees. It's kind of a neat area as we're here in the foothills. But in Idaho, you're very clearly where you have these very tall trees. And in our neighborhood, there was just these beautiful tall trees. And you can see that that corner is actually of our house and these giant tall trees, which we loved, loved looking at. One day, there was a storm. I remember it very vividly. The wind started to blow these big, tall trees, and these big trees would go back and forth. And for most of those trees, they withstood that storm right? Most of those trees withstood that storm, but not all of them. You can see these ponderosa pines, they would put their roots down deep, and they would absorb what was around them, and they would stand tall. But for some of those trees, the things that they were pulling out of the soil, it was not enough. And the storm toppled them over. We must address the decay that happens because it won't take care of itself on its own. We're going to hop into another verse real quick because this one in Galatians is really important. Galatians 5, 13 through 15. My brothers and sisters... God called you to be free, but do not use your freedom as an excuse to do, what your, to do what pleases your sinful self. Serve each other with love. The whole law is made complete in this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you go on hurting each other and tearing each other apart, be careful or you will completely destroy each other. We are not actually trees, are we? Because a tree receives the nutrients of what's around it, right? The tree just does that automatically. It takes in the air and the oxygen, the carbon, and it processes it, and it has the fruit, and it bears those fruit, but it doesn't have to think about it. I am not a tree. You are not a tree. We are the children of our Heavenly Father. We are not robots that act automatically. We have access to everything we need. We have access to the Spirit. When Jesus, after resurrecting from the grave, ascended into heaven, He says, Here, I leave with you the Spirit. 
I leave with you the Spirit, access to all the things that you need. But we do have to actually do the thing. But you may have noticed that even if someone calls themselves a Christian, does not equal a person who always exhibits the fruit of the Spirit. In youth today, we were talking about some of the historical atrocities that the Christian church has done on people. In the name of Jesus, we have had some terrible things be done. Just because you get baptized does not mean that you will bear the fruits of the Spirit. It does not. One plus one does not equal two always in that case. But what do we do? How do we make sure that we bear the fruit of the Spirit? Fruit is a seed disbursement plan. The Spirit gives us the things that we need, through the oxygen, through the sunlight, and then these fruit come and bear fruit. And in those are the seed for more trees. A good tree will bear good fruit. A bad tree will bear bad fruit. How do you make sure that you are bearing good fruit? Does it happen automatically because you say you are a Christian? No, it doesn't. We know the answer to this because we have seen people who say they are Christian, people do terrible things and not exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. Again, I say this is not a salvation issue. This isn't, I'm not saying you need to be the fruits of the Spirit so that you go to heaven. That's not the part of the message that I want you to hear. That's been taken care of. That's done. You accept the gift? Good. There is more to this life than only being worried about our salvation. Are you sharing the fruits of the Spirit with those that you spend time with? Are you loving? Are you have joy, peace? But what happens when it's difficult? Here's the, the trick is that When you have a difficult person to love simply because you are a Christian doesn't mean that it's now easy to love that person. But here's the thing. You have access to all of the elements that you need in order to do that. You have access to the Spirit. At the end of it comes this one little thing. And Nike said it as best as anybody can. You just have to do it. Right? You just have to smile when you don't necessarily feel like smiling. There was a gentleman who said that he taught his family, his daughter, that whenever you leave a room, before you leave, see if you can do something that will cause someone else to smile. It's a simple thing. It's not complicated. How can you be a benefit to the people around you? Cause them to smile, cause them to laugh. But I don't feel like it. I don't feel like I feel like I'm stressed and I'm hurt and I'm punished and a person broke my heart. Prayer, the Bible, these elements of being around people that were created by God, these people that are like-minded, who can lift us up, where we only have to accept it. Take a beat. And I'm going to smile through this, and I'm going to treat others how they want to be treated. We were given a very... it's, It's complicated. It's difficult. I don't know how to do this. Okay, fine, Jesus said. Yes, this is all very common. There's a lot here. Let me break it down for you. Treat others how you want to be treated. We call it the golden rule. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. This is not about salvation. This is about reflecting Christ to those that we come in contact with 
on a daily basis, even when you don't feel it. <sighs> Take a breath and just do it. Be that reflection to Jesus even when you don't want to be. Because then we allow ourselves to be that seed disbursement vehicle of the fruit. And people can pick and pull and enjoy and be benefited by your willingness to let those elements, again, the analogy is the nutrients, the carbon in the air, the sunlight, the water. This is prayer, the Bible. All these different things that God has given us. We need to absorb them and then we let them bear fruit. It doesn't happen though on its own, as it does with a tree. We have to actually do the actions every day. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for the fruits of the Spirit. We come to you in prayer, grateful for these gifts. And in this moment, we ask to bear fruit for you. Even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. And we know that you give us everything we need in order to do that. Thank you for the gift of the Bible, where the stories of your life are written down. And... You loved people who we know were difficult to love. Thank you for your example. And in your name we pray. Amen.